Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy, was rated E10 plus by the ESRB and contains fantasy violence and mild suggestive themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, my name is Emeronith and I play games for the internet and today we're playing Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy. With me, as always, Mel. It's Mel. All right. I don't, I don't know why I'm so sick, but I am. I mean, why not? I mean, fair. Oof. Oof. Loading time disguising elevator is a go. Yeah, this was like back when that was like a new technique. What's funny is like it feels like a lot of games have gotten away from disguising loading screens again. That's true. I mean, look but... at like look at Dragon Age Inquisition. I mean. Dragon Age at least gives you an indication of progress, right? Uh, for the loading screen? Yeah. No. An indication that it is making progress, not so much, not, not where the progress is, but... An indication that something is going on. Well, yes. Yeah, I was poking around that dragon nest last night. And, um... The loading screens like to kind of freeze. Mm. They're still loading, but they go into like not responding status for a second. I hate it when things do that. Because it makes you kind of go. But, but, but. Oh, you died. Yeah, I kind of just gave up. Yeah. Need to get the zappy zap. Blue Eco. Yes. Cause we have to specify which zappy zap because it was the zappy zap that killed me. I suppose it's the sizzle sizzle that killed you. That stay open? Oh, hope so. No. Oh. <coughs> what? Yes. Oh. Nope. Grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> I deliberately touched it just to spite you. Oh. Hmm? I can tell. Because you're an asshole just like I am. Mm-hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's my own fault. I did that. Where am I? Get the better. You are on the first, um, okay. you're on the platform that raises the other platforms. Right. Thank you. And that was actually not me trying to be an asshole. That was me trying to be genuinely like. And it was very genuinely helpful. <laughs> but yeah, you would, you deal, you dealt with that place honestly better than I would. Mm. Okay. First Second, third room. I did a good. It was just too good. Okay. Roll over this time. Yes. Watch me fuck it up. Alright. It is very pretty. Of course, I also have that fucking song stuck in my head by fucking Brental Floss. Won't you come on down to Rapture? Jab a needle in your arm. It will slowly erode your genetical code, but that's part of the job. Anyway. Optional. Hmm? Charm optional. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, I know what still goes through my head all the time. The, uh, you just got owned FTW. Sorry, owned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's timed, so why waste precious moments setting up the jump when I can do that now? So, extremely dated comment here. Yeah. I mean, waste any precious moments and now they're worth fuck all. Oh my god. You have to understand my grandmother used to collect them. Of course she did. So we had to deal with uh, what to do with them, and we could like auction them off or anything. Because they would be selling for like maybe 25 cents per. So we couldn't get anyone to auction them for us. <laughs> <laughs> we did keep them. It's like we kept like ten of them. Oh. So yeah, we kept we kept the ones that we really liked and that like mattered to us, but we did not keep the entire collection. <laughs> yeah, or actually like... we might still have the entire collection. Really? I have to check the boxes we have down here. Mm. Which I'm not doing right now because we're recording and I don't want to think about it anyway, so. <laughs> Fair. But yeah, I was gonna say, of course your grandmother had the precious moments thing. She was a Christian grandmother. <laughs> like my other grandmother is so she was Catholic, which is a different place. There you go. Well, still is Catholic, actually. Well, Do a diddy, diddy dum diddy do. God. 
songs in my head now. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that was a... <laughs> that was a glitch. That was very much a thing that occurred. Mm -hmm. Nope! Oh. I'm just gonna... Just gonna die. I mean, I was, but now I'm like, mm, but I can still do the thing. <laughs> nope. I ran into it head first. Well, uh, you than me. Yes. Oh, I have a Harley D. He's looking so cute. You never know he was a little bastard. Jack? Buddy? You want to explain how that went? done with that room. Now that I, like, got that, I mean. Okay. So that's done. Established to like girls, I should I should point out. Yeah. Does not mean he doesn't like boys, but established to like girls, and she's a very pretty girl, and also the only girl within his age bracket that we meet. Like literally, the only girl in the world. Which is kind of wild when you think about it. That's gotta be like a, a, a TV tropes thing, right? Only girl in the world. Sure? Huh? I'm not sure. Easy puzzle. Yeah. You just gotta light everything up, and you can't step on them. 
uh, more than once. So you can't, like, double back or anything. So that you don't have to. Like, if you'd gone along that top edge, you would have been, um... Fucked. Yes. I mean, there is probably more than one way to solve this puzzle. I just know... how I can solve it. I know what works. Yes. When you know what works, that's all you need to know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've been playing um, Final Fantasy IX in my spare time. I'm currently trapped in a hell of my own making. Oh no. Oh god. Well, because you see, uh, minor. Spoilers, I guess, for disc two of uh, Final Fantasy IX. I am uh, fighting Beatrice at Clara, and I'm trying to get the Ice Brand from her and it's a semi rare steel right and uh but her fight is timed which means i only have a certain amount of time that i can do the steal and get the uh that looks like those things need a blue eco charge. Thank you, Daxter. Uh and get the uh sword, right? Semi rare steel. She's got two other things I can take. It is a pain in the ass. Especially... And now that we've done that, we don't have to do it again, and we can just ignore it. Uh, especially when... Uh, the guide I'm using... is like... It should only take you a couple of tries if you're, unless you're extremely unlucky. And I'm like, on try 13, 14, when I finally just stopped for the night. And it was like, really, really unlucky. If you're saying anything, I cannot hear you. I had not responded, don't worry. Okay. Because I was waiting to see if there was further than that. More salt? Yes. Well, because salt is a way of life. Yeah. I need to die and get back up there, but there we go. 
the other uh, ramp, the other slide, essentially, you can you can do again. This one, not so much. Okay, there we go. But yeah, so like, I'm struggling to get this friggin' sword, and I'm so close to just giving up on it. I mean, I get the sword later, but it would be really useful to have now. Yeah. Also, um, this is the same game where, for once in my life, I hit every button in the sword fight at the very beginning, uh, accurately. But I didn't hit it fast enough, so I only got 99 out of 100 nobles. Oh, kill him. So I didn't get the moonstone. Oh, that's... That's infuriating. And it's one of those things that I just can't stand. Because, like... I'm dyslexic. I don't know if I if you knew that about me. I'm pretty sure you did, but I'm dyslexic. I also have trouble telling my left and my right apart. So just the fact that I was able to hit the buttons is like a feat. For me. Like I said, it's the first time I've ever done it. Basically feels like that feat was snatched away from you because arbitrary, arbitrary time rules. Right. And the fact that they made it, like, because as I recall, that time limit is, I don't have those same issues, and I find the time limit very tight. It's very tight. And I'm playing on the, um, the port for the Switch, which is a port of the mobile version, where they even extended the time that you have. And I still can't do it. Please don't, okay. Huh? That was closer than it needed to be. Yeah. But now I gotta really keep my eye out for that fucking orb chest. Yeah, because it's like right at the end. Uh huh. back up, it'd be one thing. Oh. I missed it again. Yeah, I saw that. But, yeah. And so, like, so I already missed out on the Moonstone, and now there's this fucking Beatrix fight. And I'm just so frustrated. And the guide is like, just do it, it's easy. Yeah? Ephemeral Fantasia. 
I feel like that name sounds familiar, and I cannot tell you why. Maybe you've complained about it to me before. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have. I actually streamed a little bit of it, like, five or six years ago. Gagava! That, that's my fault. I was looking away from the screen. It's, but it's basically the game with the, uh, sort of time loop mechanics and, if, and like, real-time clock and gives you, like, no guidance whatsoever and... Oh, Bravely Default. Only worse. Mm. Really, Bravely Default actually does have some coherence to it. That's true. I'm being unnecessarily mean to Bravely Default. Mostly because... Like... One or two times makes sense. Seven? And if you know, you know. In this case, like, Ephemeral Fantasia to a degree tried to do the Majora's Mask thing. Ugh. With the real time clock type stuff. That's irritating. Except Majora's Mask is actually a good game. It's true. Fuck. Ephemeral Fantasia is, um... Not. Right. Why do I want to play this again? Because it's the first PS2 game I ever picked up. Oh, buddy. I return to the game. I mean... <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's, oof. That's being I generous. And I don't return games. Well, I also couldn't drive at the time I was 12. Well, yes. Like, I've just had a lot of nostalgia for old PS2 games lately. There's another one I remember, but I can't remember the freaking title of, and it's pissing me off. Okay. It was like this game... Hey! Amazing. Okay. It was, it was like this game where you directed a symphony. I think there were aliens. Uh. Melody something. I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, God, this part. The dark ego is rising! It's okay. I can do this part. I'm playing it, not you. No, that was on account of a certain little somebody. Harley. Sorry, I, like, have a, a, I had an itchy on my face that needed to be dealt with. Ah. You were saying? Uh. 
like... So... It's an interesting thing, like, it's an interesting thing with, like, sometimes it puts me... Like, this happens, like, if I play Elden Ring sometimes, it's uh -huh. like that. Either an input getting eaten for reasons, or, like... Um, I think this happened more in Dark Souls 3, actually. Um, input queuing. Where you start clicking an input, you get hit by something, and then your input goes through. Oh. Yeah, you, as you can imagine, that goes about as well as you can think. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we just have to raise the chamber, and that's this way. It's down the slide. Yep. With hopefully not hitting the bikes. Yes. See, if we had missed any orbs here, this would be the cleanup. But as you can tell, we don't uh, go back down that second slide. So there is no chance, no ideal chance. Yeah. yeah. Like, you could. It's just a pain in the ass. And we don't want to do it. Right. Well, yeah, I think this was a general you, not a Jack specific you. What? Why? Thank God, now we never have to come this way again. So where to next? Do we aim for suffering right away or? enough to, I believe, get both cells from the oracle. Uh-huh. Here is another power cell for your quest. Fly well, like, um, for the voice from the oracle. I offer you mm -hmm. a power cell. Um, so, I've been sometimes watching Backstream um, Cult of the Lamb lately. Ah, uh, yes. Our cult free. <laughs> mm hmm. But, um. He act. He does. He voice acts like all the demons and stuff, and it just reminds me of his demon's voice. That's reassuring. <laughs> Isn't it? Okay. Mmm. I'm gonna do Precursor Basin next. I know. Good luck, boys. I know.
But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay hydrated. And I'll Don't see you in the next the one. <laughs> That's my advice for everyone's life. Don't go to Precursor Mason. And I'm going to see you in the next one where we go to Precursor Basin. <laughs> Until then. Bye-bye. <laughs>